A common home theater kind of operation, logistical question and frustration that I see uh, a good bit and I, and I feel questions about in the comments is, why does my screen black out? People don't like when their screen goes black. They don't understand necessarily why that may be happening when they're watching television or, or navigating around a, a, a television watching streaming type of device. And in the video that I did a little while back, uh, I've made a bunch of videos actually about my preferred settings and recommended settings and ways to use specifically the Apple TV 4K device. Um, in that video, I recommend essentially setting the device to SDR uh, color space by default and leaving the match frame rate and match color space options in the Apple TV settings on so that depending on, on what you are watching, the Apple TV will output true to the source. And what that means though is you're actually introducing potentially more of those black screens as you start content, as you stop content, and even potentially as you nav navigate around certain parts of the UI. So I just had another question about this in the comments that said, said specifically that, hey, I followed your settings, my screen is blacking out, I don't understand why. So here you go. Let's talk about, in fact, why these things happen. And hopefully by the end of the video, uh, I will have justified to you that these screen blackouts are actually okay. Uh, in my opinion, it's better to live with them than the alternatives, but there are some ways to work around them if you find them just so absolutely frustrating that you, you don't want to experience them at all. There are some pros and cons actually to some settings that would enable you to avoid some of these black screen. But first I want to kind of demonstrate these settings and the black screen effects that you get from them. So we're in the living room here, Apple TV 4K UI, running on the LG G2 OLED. We're going to go ahead and go down into settings. We're going to go to video and audio. And we have a couple uh, elements here that relate to what we're talking about. Specifically, the ones I'm focused on are format and match content. So I have both match content types on dynamic range, which is the matching for SDR, HDR, Dolby Vision, and the match frame rate as well. And as recommended in my prior video, I keep my default format at 4K SDR. I want the menus, I want the general operation to be running in 4K SDR. In addition, the Apple TV UI with these settings by default, uh, the one I have selected here, is running the, the base format at 4K SDR 60, 59.94 hertz, which means we're running the UI at basically 60 frames per second. Now, if I change either one of these formats, if I change frame rate or I change dynamic range, I'm going to experience a blackout. So if I go ahead here and just change over to 4K HDR, there's my blackout. The LG indicates now in the upper right hand corner that we're in HDR mode and we've completed the transition. If, if you can tell, I'm not recording here in HDR, but the screen, everything turned a little brighter, a little brighter. It, it looks a little punchier and so on. But realistically, none of these UIs themselves benefit from being ran in HDR. And so there's, there's not necessarily much of a reason, in my opinion, to push your display and, and run the default state in, a, in HDR itself. So I'm going to flip it back to SDR again. We've got that black screen. And so if I were doing anything in the UI to change content uh, from, from the menu running in SDR to watching a movie that would be in HDR, I'm going to get that same kind of blank out. And what's happening is basically a renegotiation of the signal between the Apple TV itself and the television. Through that HDMI connection, different modes have to be enabled, uh, different elements of the operating system, the firmware, uh, and the engine of both the television and the Apple TV are changing over to the, new, to the new signal. And during that interim period, nothing, there's, nothing can be displayed. And so that's why we get the blackout. And so we get the same thing even in the cases where we might actually change just the frame rate. So I'm going to go down to other formats. And basically what I'm looking for is a 4K, 4K, wow, this one's really buried. It's way down there. But here it is. This is what I was, was looking for. I wanted to find a 4K, 23.976 hertz, a 24 frame per second default setting. Film, movies, all of that sort of thing, high uh, end television shows that are not just something that you're watching perhaps on broadcast television, all of that type of media is recorded at 24 frames per second, not 60. And so if I pick one of these to change from, we're going to go 4K SDR from 4K SDR 60 to 4K SDR 
at this lower frame rate, you see we get the same black screen. We get the same blackout effect, again, because the, the source box, the Apple TV, and the television need to resync. And while the, the, the flow of information, the video content being output, the, st the refresh rate of the television, while all these things are being reset, it's just not really possible to, to necessarily show something uh, on the screen and thus we get the blackout. So two reasons then why you can experience these blackouts while you're watching content. Now you're not gonna necessarily be able to really see it in this video recording but rest assured, now in the menus, running this at 24 hertz essentially doesn't look very good. It's janky. It doesn't scroll smooth. Even the jumping between the boxes and when the, all of the options start to scroll up, they stutter uh, because our eyes want to see interfaces. They want to see UIs at 60 hertz. You wouldn't want to run your computer on a monitor, ideally at less than 60 hertz as well. Your mouse, everything's going to look really uh, really improper and really janky. <clears throat> so for the most part, minus some caveats I'll talk about in a minute, this is kind of like a necessary evil of basically doing video content what I would consider to be the correct way. So let's talk about some of the caveats and some of the special considerations essentially of running things this way and why actually maybe even having the black screens is a bit preferable. The first thing that I'll say um, is if you're experiencing the frustration, if you're experiencing the frustration or finding it very frustrating to have the black screen kick up and kick away uh, when you're using a flat panel, any kind of Samsung, Sony, LG, whatever, basically any type of television, you have it pretty good. Uh, because one thing to keep in mind is in the home theater realm, when we're talking about projectors, man, projectors are just awfully slow, generally speaking. Uh, at this type of resynchronization. And so projectors go black for quite a while longer, several seconds, in fact, up to. There's a lot of cases where down in the theater room, we'll start playback of something. Again, same idea, Kaleidoscape, running the Kaleidoscape at 4K SDR, 60 frames per second. We start watching a movie that's 4K HDR, 24-ish frames per second. And we actually have to like pause the movie because the, the Kaleidoscape will be playing the audio will be there, but the projector is still chugging along before it actually gets the, the moving image, the full picture image up on the screen. Newer projector models are getting better with this and hopefully uh, successor models that we get in the future will get even better and better and faster and faster and kind of take a little bit of that frustration out of our lives. But as fast as pretty much any commercially available flat panel syncs, you know, we're talking about like a second instead of several that makes a really big uh, usability difference and frustration. So if you're really bothered by that one second of black screen, hey, that, that's still a, a legitimate way to feel, but still realize you got it way better than, uh, than the projector folks. Now, if you find yourself saying like, you just hate this thing, you don't want the black screens, you don't want them no matter what, th there are some ways to work around that. And the way that you would work around that essentially is to not follow the guidance that, that, I, that I was giving and that I use myself, which is keeping your UI uh, in a standard format and then leaving the matching turned on. You could in fact turn the matching off and say, you know what, I'm just gonna leave things in certain ways all the time uh, and be happy with that. The problem is if you do that one way or the other, you're going to trade something um, or another off. Of course, HDR is, is the standard quality format that we really wanna be watching our content, enjoying our content in nowadays. So by no means would you want to fix your display or fix your devices to be SDR only and for the benefit of not having to change over to HDR. I, I don't recommend that in any way whatsoever. However, on the other side of things, you could leave the device in the HDR state all of the time with the match dynamic range off and SDR information will conceivably fit inside of an HDR container. In fact, when the Apple TV first came out, and I believe when they first did HDR support, that's how things worked. We didn't have the, the matching. They just assumed everybody would turn HDR on. SDR information would be contained in the bigger uh, HDR container. The television would make sense of that. Things would still look right and look proper and everything would be the way that it's supposed to. In reality, not all devices are created equal in that way. Uh, you can potentially introduce uh, like 
negative elements of processing, let's say inaccuracies and other things, uh, if the information is not properly contained, properly mapped or like properly extracted from that larger container. So you're potentially opening your, yourself up uh, to, some, to some misrepresentations uh, along the way. Although I, I will say that by now, things have gotten a lot better for most devices with SDR inside of an HDR container. It does in fact work pretty reasonably well. And if you really want to, again, avoid those sinks and stuff, it, it's, it's an okay uh, way to go. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, but there's worse things that you could do probably with your AV systems and worse settings that you could turn on as well. In, in fact, I will say too, with my gaming PC, uh, I do actually do that just because HDR on PC can be finicky. I run my PC in HDR all the time, no matter what, and assume that if I'm playing an older game and it's in HDR, it'll map and things look okay. And I'm happy with that because the PC is a little bit more complex of an animal. When we're dealing with something like an Apple TV that gives us like really great flexibility between these settings, gives us these matching capabilities and properly switches and does the right things like it's supposed to, why not use those capabilities and remain true uh, to, the, to the mapping, to the format of the piece of content that you're watching because it really does work very well. So that's the dynamic range. The other, you have the same choices essentially when it comes to frame rate. Do you wanna just fix things at 24? Do you wanna just fix things at 60? Or do you want your system to dynamically change in between? Similar to what we were just talking about with the dynamic range, the one thing that I don't recommend you do is fix everything to basically always run at 24 frames per second. Uh, to, again, to me, I really pick up on the fact that UIs don't look very good. And depending on the UI, and particularly if it's like a bigger screen in your theater, you're running a UI at 24 frames per second, it's going to look hitchy. Some people could even maybe get a little motion sick trying to navigate around something that's hitching and janking and stuff that way. So that, that's not one that I would recommend uh, in any way whatsoever. All these devices nowadays have these, these fast computers and processors and stuff in them. They can run like nice, smooth and uh, say quality, high quality level interactive UIs. So let them run at 60 FPS and let them look nice like they're supposed to. If you don't want to uh, experience, in, if you don't want to experience the resyncing, the black screens and stuff related to frame rate, the thing that you could do instead would be to fix your boxes, fix everything to run at essentially 60 frames per second all of the time and turn off the match frame rate. Now what that means is that your movies, the box will actually be outputting movies at 60 frames instead of at 24 frames. And one of the big problems that you get into with frame rates, especially if you have displays and things refreshing at certain rates that are different than the rates of the content that is feeding them, is if those rates are not either one-to-one uh, -one mapped to each other, or let's say they're not multiples of each other, you're going to get judder meaning you're going to see some frames on your screen multiplied more times than other frames. And your eye and watching, you will pick up on that, especially in panning sequences and certain types of, uh, and, and other certain types of imagery. That's going to look ugly. That's probably going to knock you out of enjoying the content when you see it. And then once you start seeing stuff like that, like most things in, in home theater and AV, you're not gonna be able to unsee it anymore. That's the whole reason we do the match frame rate to begin with. So everything is properly matched up, one to one, nice and smooth, and it all looks as good as it can or as good as it's supposed to. The reality though uh, is pretty much, I think every reasonably uh, capable contemporary display has a de-judder type of functionality software video processing built into it. And so what's happening is the display will be looking at the signal coming into it and if that movie is being played into it at 60 frames per second, it's going to detect, okay, that some, some images, some of these frames repeat three times, some of them repeat two, and it will actually like reverse the, reverse the judder effect. It'll throw away the display of those extra frames per se, and you'll actually get a smooth playback as if you had the match frame rate turned on. Now, if you really wanna know for certain that your TV is capable of this, you gotta go do kind of the homework on it. A good place to look would be to go to, to Artine's ratings 
and look up your television there, look up their detailed technical reviews, and they will tell you um, amongst all of the information about the displays if they do these like reverse uh, judder processing and things like that. And again, na nowadays, I think it would be very it would be very unlikely to probably find a television that doesn't actually do that kind of processing. So again, if you're going to turn the matches off, then I would recommend go with 60 frame per second output and go with HDR as the default. Set that up, turn the matches off, and and in, in most cases you're you're going to be okay. The SDR and HDR is going to work. The dejutter effects will will be in effect. Uh, and, and everything should be like it's supposed to be. But if you want to make sure, technically speaking, again, that everything is really the way it's supposed to be, then follow the guidance here. Stick to 4K SDR 60 for like your default menu state uh, and leave the matching and the switching turned on and just accept those black screens. I think as we go forward, even potentially within maybe another, another year or maybe one more model revision of a lot of these boxes, there, are, there is some capability coming to HDMI that's supposed to allow for these switches uh, and these resynchronizations to take effect without, in fact, introducing the black screens. It's actually taking advantage, I think, of some of like the variable refresh rate and other features that have come to our displays nowadays, largely in support of gaming. Uh, but those features are, are interestingly being used um, to also help address something along these lines. Now my system, my TV here, still blacks out when I change these modes because I don't have the, the, capable, the capabilities in the hardware that I have today. Um, I think between both the LG and at least the Apple TV, uh, one or the other, or maybe even both of these actually don't support that kind of blankless refreshing resynchronization capabilities. But maybe you're using boxes and you have a newer display that actually supports that or hopefully at least in a future version of tvOS if possible, or if it's a hardware thing in a future version uh, or next revision of the Apple TV 4K, maybe we'll get those types of capabilities connected in. And by no means would I necessarily go looking to try to spend money like buying a new TV or upgrading with that being a factor. I have no problem with uh, a partial second, uh, again, of blackout. It's something that's existed for a long time in AV and home theater, and I guess I'm just accepting of it and used to it. And if technologies and capabilities eliminate that at some point, cool. But no matter what, I'm still one that's a little bit of a purist with my signals as much as possible. And I would like the, I would like everything to be working according to the whatever content I'm watching and how it was designed and coded and specified. So this might have gone a little longer than I was hoping to, but I did, really did want to provide kind of, of a more holistic treatise about this at the end of the day. Again, the whole video can kind of be summed up in about a 30 second recommendation. 4K SDR 60, turn on the matching, live with the black screens, be happy with it. Everything's doing what it's supposed to do. It's not a mistake, it's not a problem, nothing's breaking. And, uh, and that, that's the way that our, our devices generally work here today. So if you have more questions on this, sound off in the comments, let me know. We can definitely have some discussion, share some more thoughts. Check out the other video on the whole uh, Apple TV video and audio kind of settings recommendations. <clears throat> Although I have gotten a good amount of feedback on the video, I, I need to re-record, I think, some of the earlier Apple TV ones that I was doing, get myself out of the screen frame. Your feedback is noted um, and, and focus on the settings and the information that's on the display so that you can read it and you can see it and listen while I'm talking. Uh, at some point, maybe I will do, maybe in 2024, do a re-recording um, of some of those videos as well. But the content stands, it's there. You can watch it and the information is available to you along, again, with a, a number uh, of recommended Apple TV settings, tweaks, tips, and, and other types of videos available on Techthusiasm. Thanks so much for watching. Come on back for more home theater discussion and fun.